I have been in school for 17 years now and I'm still not finished. So for all these years there have been good and some bad moments and I'd like to share them with you all. I was thinking that I'll tell two stories from every school I've been to. If I'd tell a story from every year I'd have 17 stories and that is a lot. Plus I don't even remember all the years I was in school. So let's start with my primary school years. These are the hardest to remember because you start your school journey at the age of 7 and it has been some time now, but I still have some memories of this time. The first story I'm going to tell happened when I was in 2nd to 3rd grade. I don't remember exactly the grade, but that's okay, that's okay. So this happened pretty early in the school day. We had sport with upper class girls. We didn't have a huge school, so we mixed classes in sport often. We had two changing rooms and they both lead to the school gym. As a kid, you change your clothing really fast compared to the teacher and you have to wait for the teacher to come and let you to the gym. But the doors were not locked anytime and we have to remember that. So my teacher, let's call her Mrs. Kusisto, this is not her real last name by the way, Took her sweet time changing her clothing. She was an old lady, so I get it. The gym room was always dark if no one used it, so teacher always put the lights on and let everyone out from the changing rooms. That was the norm we all followed, but because Miss Kusisto took an extra long time to get to the gym and we all were excited little kids, I don't remember who, but I have a strong feeling it was me who opened the door to the dark gym and we all know there were only two options after that. A. Wait for teacher or B. Run in the darkness with others and risk hitting each other. So I started running and the feeling of running in darkness was amazing. There were no obstacles on the ground so you couldn't fall on the ground so everything was safe. I was just running and laughing until I hit my friend. We fell down on the ground and I didn't know who I hit. My friend told me later that it was them who I hit. I don't have memory of what I did on the ground but I remember going back to the locker room to wait for the teacher and so did others too. I think Miss Gusisto came after that and our class started. I didn't say anything that happened to her. I just wanted to play until I started to feel sick. It felt like I could black out, I couldn't stand straight and of course Miss Kusisto noticed that I couldn't leave the bench so she took me to the locker room and told me to change back into my regular clothing and she called my mom. My mom came fast, I think, I didn't know what was going on and my mom took me to the ER. I kinda remember the car ride to ER and I told the nurse what happened or my mom did, I think. The nurse still got what was going on and told me that I had a concussion and that was my first concussion ever. My mom took me back home and I remember puking after that. My friend didn't get concussion and she was actually wondering why I wasn't doing so well because she was doing good. But yeah, what did I learn from that time? Don't run in dark room with others, it can get surprisingly dangerous. The second story take place when I was in fifth grade and I was in recess and I tried to find something to do. Most of the time I was with my friends, but this time I spent recess with the boys somehow. So we had two set of swings in the schoolyard with both of them having two swings on them. I don't know how I and the boys got an idea of the game, but I was standing in front of the swings like 50 to 100 meters away, so it wasn't that long distance. But the game was that the boys would swing and try to hit me with their shoes. They'd have full speed on the swings and they really tried to hit me, but they missed all the time. The shoes would fly at me, but never hit. It lasted like five minutes until a teacher understood what was going on and came to stop us. I was sad because we had a good time. I don't know if it would have been a good time if they'd hit me, but we will never know. I really was not the smartest kid back then. <laughs> 
Now we get to change the school to my secondary school or junior high school. The first story takes place when I was in seventh grade. For the first time, teachers started to send you out of the classroom if you misbehaved. That never happened in the primary school, but in this school that happened. Now I'd say that I've always been a good student, I didn't get in trouble and I listened to the teacher. But this time of my life I found my Tamagotchi and I used to play with it in primary school and then forget. So I found it again and I got batteries for it. I know that you can mute your Tamagotchi or put it on pause, but I did neither of those. I had it in school and in the middle of class and I could hear my Tamagotchi call for me. Now I couldn't take it out of my pocket because I could get in trouble with it. So the only solution in my mind was to get out of the room. I could have just asked to go to the bathroom because you can always go to the bathroom, but I'm not the smartest kid in the class. Our teacher was talking with serious tone to the class at that time and she just happened to ask, do you all want me to get angry? And I said yes. She turned her eyes to me and told me to go out of the room, so I did, and I got to feed my Tamagotchi, <laughs> and I played with it and put it on to sleep. Not the smartest thing to do, I know, but you have to sacrifice some things just to save your 27th generation Tamagotchi child. <laughs> My second story from my secondary school takes place in 8th grade, if I remember right. This story has three other people, my friend A, A's friend B, and a girl C, who was in the same grade as me, but different class. So I was walking with A from outside to inside in recess and B dramatically turned behind a pillar in front of us and asked if I was Oni, and I said yes, because I am me, and B asked me if I was bullying C, because C told B that I was doing that. Now B as a person was a tomboy, she could hit you if she'd like, but she was also a sweet person. C on the other hand was a I want to create drama all around me because my life is so boring and I want to be the main character. I didn't talk to C ever. Like little conversations sometimes, but she was not for me as a person. So she was lying about me to B for no good reason. I told B that I never talked to C and A could confirm that too. I'm glad that B listened to everyone before acting, so she left me. I asked A did she ever get more information about this situation, but she didn't even remember this, so I have no idea what happened between B and C after that. Then we can move to my last school, aka high school. My first story happened when I was in my second year of high school. These people are different from the previous story, but this story takes time in winter when my friend A was having a Christmas party at her home and there were more guests at the time, like 8 to 10. This was not my first time being at this person's party and I knew the routine. We arrived at the place at 4, stay up night, sleep and leave in the morning. At the party there was also my friend B who brought their friend to the party and we can call this person Robert, not his real name. Now I knew who Robert was and what kind of person they were. My friend B talked about them a lot so I had some knowledge of them. Robert was a heavy drinker and they liked to party. The night went well, we had a cute time and I remember being to go to sleep and I slept upstairs on a mattress. I was also one of the first people to wake up and I headed downstairs and the first thing that I noticed is that my friend B and Robert were already gone. I knew where they would sleep and they weren't there. Robert had a car so they could leave whenever they wanted. The second thing I noticed was that the kitchen was clean. We most of the time cleaned the kitchen in the morning. So I went to the kitchen to get some water and when I come to the sink I see it is full of puke and as a nice person I clean it. After a while my friend A comes downstairs and they ask me if I could clean one mattress that is in the shower. She tells me that Robert had an accident at night and I said sure. I knew that A couldn't handle cleaning puke without puking herself so I went to the shower and I cleaned the mattress with water. They didn't have anything else there. 
After that, the rest of us ate and did the cleaning and I told A about the sink and she got pissed about that how Robert couldn't go to the bathroom and puke into the toilet, but she let it go. After that, A drove me and a couple of other people to the bus station where we all could get home. The day goes well and the next day comes and I meet A at school and she tells me that the sink was not the only thing where Robert puked. So after A dropped us to the bus station and returned home, she kept smelling puke. She looked over the places and couldn't find the source until she looked under the stairs and there was a mattress slightly leaning so that it couldn't not be seen immediately from the top of other things. And when she pulled the mattress to the floor, there was puke all over it. So what happened was that Robert puked on two mattresses at the party he told about about the first one, but hit the second mattress. Um, we know this because B told her what Robert did. She was so, so angry at Robert. And after that, Robert was never invited to the parties. And for the last story, this happened when I was in my third year of high school. I took part in a school show. I don't remember what the show was that we were showing, but I remember not having the most important role. And I was fine with that. For me, this show was still a big show and I wanted to make sure I remember all the lines. Before the first show, I wanted to practice my lines one more time just to make sure I remember everything. It was late, so no one was at the school, so I went to a section that was a small hallway. I was the only one in there and I started to read my lines. First I was standing, then I started to walk and after a while my walking became faster until I started to trot. I don't know the right word for it, but I describe this walking as human trotting. I don't know, it also can be called skipping leg. I don't know. So I started to do that. I was so into it that I didn't want to stop and my excitement just kept rising and rising until I heard a door open to the hallway I was in and I immediately went quiet and I stopped. It was my English teacher just walking into his classroom for no reason. He said hi to me and I said hi back and I just left the area. I don't know how much he heard, but I was embarrassed and I didn't want to talk about that to him. The show went great, but I'd still love if my teacher didn't hear me trotting and speaking to myself. Thank you all for listening to all my little stories. It was interesting to remember all these good and not so good times. I still have a lot of stories that I could tell, but I will save them for another time. If you liked this video, remember to like and tell me in the comments your school stories. I'd like to hear them. Also, remember to check all my socials and subscribe to me. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye bye!